Austin Matthews avoids an injury scare, and the Buds move to 0-2 on the preseason. Let's break it all down on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. What's going on, Dave? How are we feeling on a Wednesday? Not too bad. Not too bad. Just uh, oof, man. It gets tough. Two preseason games in, and it's like, how many more of these games? Yeah, we're, we're ready for the real stuff. I think we're ready for the real stuff. That that's always been like a conversation, like the the preseason, and it's just it's too long. Like there's seven games, like six seven games is too Leafs long. Get six I, games. Senators have seven games. Like why yeah. would you for an extra game? I mean, it, it is too long, especially when you look. It's like everyone's ready to go at this point. And honestly, I I. I guess you just want to get an extra look at some of those guys who maybe aren't going to be making the team at a camp, but you want to know like, okay, what do they look like if they do need to get thrust into a lineup, you know, like an Alex Steves who I thought played well in tonight's game, you know, lost, but scored looked good. So it's more so just like getting those guys an extra game an extra look, I suppose. But ultimately, I mean, the fans are, are already you know, decided, okay, let's just get to the real, especially when you look at a roster that played in, in tonight's game against the, the senators in which, you know, the Leafs lost two to one. Um, but they, they, you know, it was just a meh game. Like they, they didn't have really anyone going. I think it was Matthew Nyes, David camp, like really outside of those two players, there wasn't a lot of Bobby McMahon, I guess, did play too. Um, Nick Robertson, but not a lot of guys that you look at and you're like, all right, they're going to be on the roster come night one. So it's 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 just not one that you're uh, totally thrilled to watch. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. It it was a boring game. It really was not a great game to watch. It was no, preseason no. hockey. It was preseason hockey. It was it was your classic preseason game, like. You're you're trying to find anything to kind of give your like peas your attention, like just grab your attention from it. It's like, eh. yeah, there were some things I liked about it. There was, you know, but in comparison, yeah, there was a like little scrap. scrap. It, we talked about it yesterday, right? That was a player who we were like, hey, you know, he's got to make an impression on the coaching staff. That is one way to make an impression, I would say. I think, oh, that's definitely a way to make, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we talked about it, it like, well, if he's not really doing, like, the skill stuff, is he going to do the physical stuff? Ah. And like, he, it wasn't like he, yeah, the guy challenged him, but he, he dropped the gloves. Like, he didn't back, like, there was no hesitation from Pontus Homer to drop the gloves on that play. So, I, I do think that, you know, like, that's, that's a plus when you at least get, like, show a little fire, a little passion in the in the game because yeah otherwise just there was a lot of i wouldn't say sloppiness but like guys were really fumbling passes opportunities to shoot and the pucks jumping off sticks it's like this was not a very clean game yeah no it wasn't like an, a super clean game I mean, you don't expect it to be when you look at the roster that was out there but you know there was some good there was some bad and there was some ugly, Dave. So why don't we get to it? Break down the game. Leafs losing two to one uh, to the Ottawa Senators. They're now oh one and one on the preseason sked. Still without a win in the uh, in the the Craig Brube era. And it's funny afterwards. Uh, I, I don't know who it was, but one of the reporters asked him like, "Oh, like when does?" you know, worry start to set in. He's like, it's preseason. <laughs> I, I had the same response. I'm like, I, I don't I'm like, they're not seriously going to ask this question. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh. I, I don't want to rag on, you know, the, the reporter for, I don't know who it was. I couldn't really, not that I want to, you know, name the person anyways, because whatever it was, I think I know what, you know, the, what they were trying to get at, but yeah, I don't know what you expected to get out of, 
out of out of Craig Berube. Like he's not one to mince words. He's he's not one to overreact. And he basically his answer was exactly what I would have expected it to be. It's preseason. What the hell is there to worry about? Um, but yeah, that's not too. Yeah, like all right. Let, let's let's get to the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I thought there was there was you know a decent amount of good though in this game. Like it 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 was one that uh, although it wasn't wasn't the cleanest game, I think that there was. Uh, it, it was more of a Brube style game. Like I think you could totally see that there was more of a North South and when there's less skill in the lineup, that's it. That's, that's kind of how you got to play, I suppose, especially when the senators do have the better end, the, the better roster on the ice, you're, you're going to have to play with, you know, half decent structure. You're going to have to play North South. You're going to have to be in their face. And that's pretty well what, uh, what the Maple Leafs were, were trying to do. So I thought that, you know, there was a bit of an identity, uh, the, and and you got your, your your first little glimpse and look into what Barube wants players to do, right? How to play, and I thought that uh, guys who you know are really fighting for their roster spots, like they're gonna have to adapt to that style of game. So I thought we kind of saw a little a little glimmer of it uh, in tonight's game. So I thought uh, that was good. Right? You, you you saw guys start to establish, you know, an identity for this team. Well, that's it, right? Like. We that was something we were looking for uh, after the now when we were talking about this game was are we going to start to see a little, a little bit more of the brew base out because yeah the top players the skilled players maybe it's going to take them a little bit of time to adjust but like the other players who are you know as you said as we're saying have to really put on a good show for the coach staff these are these are times where we're going to have to really have to show that you're you're understanding the systems and you're. Yeah paying attention to those details. So I thought there was a lot of that to a lot more of that tonight than I, we saw the other other day. Yeah. And I think like Holmberg is, is one, you know, one of the players who I thought looked, uh, looked, looked decent tonight. You saw him get a little bit physical feisty. You saw the, the play obviously on, on Ridley Gregg. That was, uh, I think that was, you know, people don't forget what Ridley Gregg did last year. Uh, that cost Morgan Riley five games last season, uh, and then the slap shot to the net and all that. So you know, may have been, may have been a little bit of uh, uh, you know retaliation from that. But um, then obviously Holmberg challenged to the fight and and obliges, drops the mitts, and I thought he actually handled himself decently well. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't recall seeing Holmberg ever fighting or dropping the dropping the mitts. So. Mike Johnson was quite surprised about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, it's again, we talked about like yesterday, not to, not to sit here and just completely, you know, just say the same thing over and over, but we just don't really know what Holmberg is. Right. And, and, and he needs to show us that he, he's got more tools in the tool bag. Uh, being able to fight, being physical, being edgy uh, is certainly, you know, a nice trait to have for someone who's fighting for one of those final roster spots. Um, I thought Alex Steves stood out to me tonight. Obviously, he scored the lone goal, a bit of a cheeky goal. But, you know, you look at it, he had eight hits tonight, too. So he was finishing his checks. And, you know, it's a team that wants to be a good checking team. I don't think Steves is really in the running for one of those final spots on the roster. But he's one of those guys who's like first call up, right? First call up from the Marlies, you know, and, and if he can play with a li little bit more of a physical edge, um, that's that's only going to help him right in that regard so i thought steve's put on a pretty good showing in his first game under craig brube well I, exactly and like the goal was it wasn't anything spectacular it was a simple play but mm -hmm. it was i mean that's what brube wants right he wants to make this don't don't be cute remember he, he he hates cute just yeah. throw it on that you know he was, i'm sure i was i was surprised i was like that went in but like <laughs> preseason buddy <laughs> in preseason and it's like yeah i mean once in a while you're gonna get lucky with one of those if you're gonna throw it out there and hope you know and hope something happens and that's what happens when you do it so i'm glad that uh i'm glad that so, like a player like that is listening to those sort of things that the coaches want because ultimately that's what's going to benefit a player like steve's just do the simple things well it looks good on the coaching staff uh what else stood out to you what's in your good column Goaltending, yeah, like Stolars and Hildeby. I know that the Leafs lost, but like, <laughs> there are some saves that was like mid-season form type of saves tonight. Oh, yeah. Like Stolars, his size is really apparent in that. Well, in both players, but like especially Stolars, 
just that ability. He doesn't have to like reach out far to get to those second efforts. He just that, covers the net. Like, he just like yeah. covers a lot of the net. Yeah. yeah so I, I thought they were both pretty good. Like especially he'll be made. A, oh my god! I think it was. I can't remember who he made the save on, but it was like again. It's it's the ability with your big body to cover parts of that that maybe other goalies can't. Yeah. And get to pucks that others can't. Like uh, I'm liking what I see because he'll be a you know it's an interesting case for him because you know many thought should have maybe have gone into at least one game last year didn't didn't have the best end to his season with the Marlies in the playoffs. Like I think this is this is a big year for him, especially if the Leafs are looking to see if he can be that third goaltender because that's Matt Murray is brought in kind of as the inch. At least you have an NHL guy to be your third guy. But if Hilda B does well, no injury happens, he could be the first one called up. Yeah, injuries likely to happen when you yeah. look at the, the guys in front of him, right? So yeah, Hilda B. I, I would I, if I had to place an over under on games played for Hilda B, and it's it's placed at you know like half a game. Like, will he play at least a game this year in the NHL? I I say yes. I mean, look at the amount of goalies that the Leafs have had to filter through the last two years because of injury and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I think that all four goalies will probably end up playing at some point, at least one game this season. Uh, so it's nice to see that, uh, you know, they're, they're both in, in fine form. And Stolarz, for sure, I thought, put forward a pretty good effort. I had a text from my uncle. He's like, love to see, you know, Stolarz tonight. He was awesome. I was like, yeah, yeah, pretty good goalie. Pretty good goalie. So, uh, you know, hopefully he can continue that moving forward all right we'll take a quick break let's come back let's get into the bad and there was one very ugly play we will get to that as well uh and an update on austin matthews who left practice today with an injury scare we'll tell you about that on the other side i'm mike DiStefano with dave moore studio You're listening to the lockdown leaves podcast part of lockdown podcast network it's your team every day Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you placed your bets. You'll get get yourself started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Doesn't have to be on the NFL. You can bet on the NHL. You can bet on the Maple Leafs. Uh, in their next preseason game, bet on a future. Any $5 bet on FanDuel gets you $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's FanDuel.com. Welcome back into the Locked On at Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you here as we are each and every Monday through Friday. You can find the show wherever you get a podcast. You can also... Find us on YouTube as well. If you enjoy the podcast, we actually you would subscribe on YouTube. And if you're listening, uh, give us a, a you know a review, a little, little five star with a review. Let us know if you're enjoying it. We love to hear the feedback. Let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts on tonight's game as well uh, on YouTube. Love, love reading the comments, all of them, every single one of them, the good, the bad, and the ugly ones, because uh, there's there's always a little bit of all three. Um, mm-hmm. Haven't haven't had any any comments about my uh, my internet of late, by the way, because it was not an internet problem; it was a computer problem, and we have since rectified that issue with a new computer. Uh, so. Haven't seen those comments recently, so you're welcome, people. See, I read them, and I learned, and I listened, and I did something about it. And now you're getting clear, crisp connection, um, which really should honestly just be the bare minimum. So I should not be parading that (laughs) as anything, let's be honest. Uh, Anyways, um, Maple Leafs, uh, another loss tonight in preseason. Doesn't matter. We're not going to overreact. The score, really irrelevant. It's just what does the product look like on the ice. Uh, We went through the good already. Now it's time to go through the bad and the ugly. Dave, what do you have in your bad column from tonight? Um. You know what? Like, I didn't think the some of the NHL hopefuls had, you know, really showed. Like, other than like Steve's and, and like Hirvinen, like, I didn't see any of the other forwards really put out much. Like, I'm looking at like Nylander, well, Alex Nylander, I should say. Uh, I thought Grabankin didn't have his best game. Easton Cowan, like, I felt like a bit of a step back for those guys, especially offensively. Like, 
Yeah. That, this is this is a game for them to really show, you know, show out right when you don't have the stars playing. You're it's the spotlight's on you to show what you can do. And I felt like there was there was a bit of a lack of, you know, off, like offensive drive from those guys. They they looked a little hesitant. Yeah, and and I'll say this for Cowan, he he ends up uh, a dash one on the night. But you know, you watch back that game. I I truly believe watch the goal from Jake Sanderson. First of all, really good puck movement by the Ottawa Senators. That was a really nice goal. Just a good play. Just flat out, gotta say it, gotta give him credit. But I will say this: the 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 one timer that you know Sanderson was set up for. If Easton Cowan didn't break his stick uh he would have definitely picked that pass off and that wouldn't have happened so that's just you know ottawa realizing hey we got a player up up top up high without a stick we can pass this thing around and you know so they ended up working the puck up uh, up up to the top and you know sanderson really nice shot beats uh beats beat stolars and that was the only goal that stolars gave up um and then they gave up uh, a terrible goal, which we'll get to in a second, that turned into the game winner. But uh, I, I just, you know, I, I saw a lot of people be like, oh, Easton Cowan, you know, didn't make a play. It's like, well, he lost didn't his stick. St- I, I, I saw the same thing. I'm like, uh, he didn't have, guy didn't have a stick. What do you what do you want from him? Like, what do you want him to do? I'll sell him- out. I mean, could have sold out. He could have. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. He could have dove, yeah. and he could have could have got a get a stick on it or something like. Be on it, trying. Really. Give a little belly slide, a la TJ Brody. I, I don't know, but yeah. Um, just just want to make sure I mentioned. I don't know that. Not that I need to come to Easton Cowan's defense. I I didn't yeah. think he had a good game. He actually is in kind of my not my bad column, but it's like he didn't impress. You know, and 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 he's he's at a point where he needs to start impressing if he wants to stick around in camp. We saw another guy get sent down today, Noah Chadwick sent to the yeah. left bridge hurricanes. And he was someone who a lot of people were kind of excited to, to get a look at during training camp because they had heard that he had a, this exceptional season at the, in the WHL. Maybe he could not necessarily push for a roster spot, but at least get a couple of games and, and look good. He didn't even get a single game. So, right. you know, this coaching staff is not, you know, keen on keeping around these young kids if they don't have a shot at making the team. So Easton Cowan, uh, it's two games so far, hasn't really impressed in, 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 in these games. And now it's like, Hey, time's ticking for you to show that you belong in the NHL. Um, so I'll be curious to see, you know, the next effort, the next time we get to see Easton Cowan, do we see a, a more dominant effort? Cause I think that's what it'll take at this point, like a real strong dominant game from him. Uh, and to make this team, I, I think it's becoming less and less uh, likely that that we see Easton Cowan stick. He's, you know, could he still get that nine gamer potentially? But I think it's it's less likely now than I thought it would have been at the beginning of camp. Yeah, I mean, it's there. There are things that he, you know, that he does. You're aware of, like he's got a good idea of where he where he needs to be on the ice and things like that. But you know, he's got a also be a little more assertive offensively too that's that's his style right he's got to be he can't be a passenger i'm not saying he's been a passenger but like i i want to see him to like try to put a little bit more of a stamp i know sometimes you don't want to do too much and look like you're doing too much but as you said like there's not many they don't give unlimited opportunities to the young players at some point they're like okay We'll send you to your junior team because now we got to prepare ourselves for the season. Yeah, and like I'll I'll say this too, he has not, and we talked about this right from the get go. He hasn't really played with, you know, stars. You know, like the guys playing on a line, you know, with with guys who just aren't really, you know, giving them a, an opportunity, right? Like you said, that's part of the problem too. He's not playing with NHLers and these studs he got a little bit of a look i guess at the end of that first game but ultimately uh you know hasn't impressed enough i think i would say um ugly dave the uh, the 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 ugly 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 turnover that led to the game winning goal for zach astopchuk uh vt mietinen um not not a good look not a good play i mean you can't you just can't turn the puck over like that in your own end and, and give away a, a breakaway on, I think it was shorthanded too, if I'm not mistaken. If I yeah. He, yeah. The Leafs were on the power play. Yeah. Like, Oh, that's How your many, chance to go up, go up two one on the power play. Instead, you're yeah. down two one with a few minutes to go. And it's like, 
Are you kidding me? How many times do you see a defenseman on his own with not much support? I don't know where he was thinking he was going with it. Turn when they turn around and do the spin around with the guy trailing them in now. the defensive zone. Does like that doesn't usually work out well often. No, and and look, Miettinen is it's his first year of pro hockey. You know, he was somebody who's played in the NCAA for a couple of years. I think he played at St. Cloud, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so he's got a lot to learn, right? Like he's got, you know, some collegiate habits that he's got to teach out of his game. Maybe that worked, you know, when he was over at St. Cloud. I ain't going to work in the NHL, and especially against a guy like Zach Ostopchuk. Like we've seen him play at the national level with Team Canada at the World Junior Championships. I mean, this guy's a puck hound. Like that that's what his bread and butter is. He's hoping to make the team as a as a depth, you know, defensive forward. Like that that's what he's going to do. He's going to knock pucks off your stick. He's going to be all over you and hopefully force turnovers and then well, he's got a little skill as well. And he showed that. Um so I thought, you know, that was that was obviously very ugly. Um can't can't blame Hill to be can't blame the goalie on that one. You you give up a breakaway like that. Yeah. It's just not not going to go very well most of the time but uh that that was certainly the 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 biggest ugly oopsie moment of the night did they all stick out to you or was that pretty much the, the the biggest blunder yeah i mean that to me that was the biggest blunder and like those 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 uh like moments do get magnified i i i can understand that i'm also like i'm looking at like a connor timmons right now mm didn't really see much from him like Conor Timmons. Yeah, like I was like waiting for that Conor Timmons moment, right? But he's a guy that I'm if you're if you're the coaching staff, not I don't know where you're gonna like I don't know what you can say to him. Like what like in terms of like just I I I don't know what else, what he is gonna be able to do to earn a spot. I feel I feel for him a little bit because it just hasn't worked. The yeah. moment he got here, it just felt like it was just like a we need a right. There was an opportunity to get a right shot defenseman, and there wasn't really a plan for him. I feel- no, there there wasn't, and and then he was signed to that extension under Kyle Dubis, and then lo and behold, you get a new management management uh, in with Brad Tree Living and. Now, all of a sudden, Connor Timmons kind of lost his cheerleader. He lost, you know, a guy who believed in him. And now it's like, OK, you know, I, now I got to prove to another manager that I'm 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 worthy of keeping around. And, you know, he he, he got hurt last year, which I, is probably the reason why he stuck around. Uh, but if he's fully healthy, I mean, he he's at this point, he certainly is a guy who's going to, you know, be sent down on waivers. Maybe a team claims him. Maybe a team sees him and says, you know what, let's give him a shot as, you know, seventh defenseman or if some team has a couple injuries at a camp and they could use an NHL body perhaps. But yeah, to me, he's he's certainly not. The only thing that would save him, I guess, is if Hockenpah's not ready to go for the beginning of the season. That would be the only thing that saves him. In my opinion, then he would be the team seventh defenseman. But if Hawk and Paw is ready, I mean, you've you've got your seven. I doubt you're going to keep Connor Timmons around as as yeah. your your eighth when he's making over a million bucks. It just they don't have the cap space for that, quite yeah. frankly. So, yeah, another guy where it's you know could have went on our pressure list yesterday, pressure list to perform, and uh, didn't impress. Another guy who just didn't impress, kind of just faded into the game. And sometimes that's good for a defenseman. But for a guy who's known as, you know, good puck moving guy, you don't want to see a little bit more from him uh, with the puck on a stick. All right. So that's the good, the bad, the ugly for game two of the preseason. So we'll put a bow and close on the game. Well, let's come back and get into this Matthews injury scare uh, that we had this morning. 25 minutes in a morning skate. Matthews departs the ice. And everyone was was in a frenzy. No one knew what was going on. We'll get the update on Austin Matthews on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of the Lockdown Leafs podcast is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. This to busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. 
Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93%, 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Leveraging over 140 million qualification preferences every day, Indeed's matching data engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than three and a half businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listen to the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed.com slash locked on today. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you. And we're here each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. It's all Leafs all the time. And uh, <laughs> this morning there was a bit of a scare at Maple Leafs camp. You probably saw the tweets. If you didn't, uh, Austin Matthews left the ice after 25 minutes of practice, did not return and uh, there was a lot of angst going around with Maple Leafs uh, Twitter. And obviously, you know, this team cannot afford an Austin Matthews injury. That's just not that would not start the season out on the right way. Luckily, head coach Greg Berube says nothing to worry about. Uh, it was considered an upper body designation, I suppose. Nothing serious was uh, was the words that were used. So hopefully that means that, uh, I don't know, it was nothing serious, but you never like to see Austin Matthews uh, leave with any type of injury preseason, regular season, especially playoffs. Like we saw, um, y you never like to see it, but I guess crisis averted. Looks like it. Um, it's, it's never great when, you know, any player goes with injury, but especially Matthews considering his past and, I, I guess just in camp, any sort of little ammo, it's like we're, we don't need to worry about, you know, you pushing yourself in any way. Oh, for sure. One hundred percent. Like if you have even like a bruise, like, dude, take the day. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't need you. I don't need you going in there. You feel like you got a stiff back. Take the day. You feel like you woke up weird. Take the day. I do not care about you missing a half of a of a preseason practice in the first week of preseason. No. Nope. Take it. Take your time, buddy. Um, I, I hope it's not the back acting up, though. That that is my my concern. Like I I know that Berube said nothing serious, nothing to be worried about. But it's just it's not good to be starting the year off with a, a little bit of uh, an, an ailment, let's call it. And again, we don't know exactly what the situation is, but you know the year that he dealt with all of his issues, where you you know a couple of years back where. You know, he he was coming off that 50, what did he score? 55, 56 goals, 54 goals, whatever it was. Um, and then, you know, came back the following season, had all these expectations. And then injuries just kind of, you know, ailed him all season long. You played through them, they were lingering. And, you know, he ended up with just a 40 goal season. And it was a bit of a down year for him. I, again, just let's hope that this is not you know, a sign of things to come this year. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not, okay. it's not, I'm not sounding the alarm. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here and say, Oh my God, this is terrible. The way that the season's starting, it's a bad omen. I'm just simply stating, I hope that this is just a one day thing and it's nothing that lingers and it's not the start of, uh, you know, something that, prolongs itself into a bit of a longer term situation where he has to play through an injury. I'm not saying it's going to keep him out, but we've seen him play through injuries and depending on what the injury is, whether it's a wrist or a back or a knee, you know, he's played through it all. There's a difference between an injured Matthews and a healthy Matthews. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I mean, that's, that's it, right? Like we, we know when Austin Matthews is at his best and when he's feeling good, body isn't dealing with any sort of knocks or anything but I, I think when it comes to comes to Matthews as well like this is a guy who plays a physical game I know some people might not always agree with that sentiment but he does and you know he he pushes himself in practice like I it usually always happens like in practice where you see something come up well and now he's right. the captain of the team where he's got to you know lead by example 
right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's a new new coaching staff. A new coach is going to want to, you know, show off probably well with some hardworking, you know, battle drills in practice. So I could see him even working a little extra harder this year than he has in years past too, right? Um, it's it's usually the case where you're, yeah, like you want to set the tone a little bit and people are looking at you now like the your big off-season storyline was the captaincy change a lot of it, it comes just it just comes with the territory a little bit there yeah but uh as of now nothing to worry about so hopefully he's back on the ice tomorrow for training camp and we'll get to see him in game action at some point over the week we got uh the third game of the preseason on thursday and then on saturday you'll get the fourth game of the preseason for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I would imagine we will see Matthews in one of those if he is indeed uh, A-OK. Really quickly, Dave, um, Gary Bettman was in the city of Toronto yesterday. He was actually at the premiere that Amazon did for the docuseries. They premiered the first episode. We spoke about it yesterday on the podcast. Uh, Bettman was there. A lot of the big wigs were there daily. Um, but Gary Bettman was obviously asked some questions while he was there and, and about the league. And there's been a lot of uh, a lot of discourse recently about the team or about the league expanding again and going from 32 to possibly 34 teams. Another big expansion with a couple more clubs and cities entering the fold. We had heard Atlanta and Houston were kind of the two teams that they were looking at. Gary Bettman put a little cold water on uh, the expansion talk, didn't he, Dave? He did, and I'm not surprised. I don't like the they with the whole thing with Utah. That was like a separate. Like I know they were like we're not going to be moving teams like that. Um, but it was a relocation. Expan- it wasn't expansion. That was relocation. Yeah, that was like that was yeah. relocation. It's a little little bit different than expansion. Expansion is all. I mean, we've already been through two of them. It takes takes quite a bit of like convincing the league to even consider it, and. I'm not surprised that the league isn't really pushing it right now because I like there are markets that are looking to get into it, but I don't think anyone's like screaming like a like you know in terms of oh we have to do this like Vegas and Seattle right like I think that's what they're waiting for they're waiting for that market that's just too it's it would be tough to say no to to joining possibly possibly that could be the case but I, I i wonder if gary's actually like money wise it probably makes sense to bring in another team the expansion money the expansion fee is like a billion dollars at this point it, it just it does make money financially but doesn't make money for the product i don't or doesn't make sense for the product i personally don't think it does i i think that they're already at a spot where it's it's tough to find a good goalie it's tough to find good depth Like it it just, it it would water down the product, water down the league to have it expand to 34. Like, I just don't think that the, I just don't think there's a skill set enough. And I don't think the the game is expanding enough or as quick, quickly as maybe some would hope to support going to 34 teams. Like I'm not saying these teams and these cities won't be able to sell buildings and arenas and sell jerseys, but like, the on ice product, I, I personally think that if you add two more clubs, it's it's going to take a hit to a lot of these teams' depth. And then, personally, just like it's it's it, take it from people who cover the Maple Leafs and have watched the Maple Leafs for for many years. It's tough to find good goalies, and you're going to add two more teams where you're you're you know chucking out these random net, net minders. We're just going to lay in, let in like six, seven goals a night, like we saw happen in San Jose last year. Like, I I don't know. I, I personally would, would like to pump the brakes. I, I thought 30 was a good number. They went to 31, then quickly went to 32. And now we're already here. And oh, yeah, they might go to 34. It's like, man, we got, let's, let's slow it down. Let's just slow it down and enjoy the league. Yeah. The way it is, it's kind of perfectly run. We got four divisions, eight teams per division. It's symmetrical on both sides, east and west. You know, half the teams make the playoffs, half the teams don't. I like the number at thirty-two. Like sue me. I maybe that's that's a that's a a hot take, and and maybe people don't like that because the excitement that comes with expansion. But I think the product would be better if we keep things where it's at for for at least a little while longer. 
Well, that's it for me, right? It's just like you, you can consider expansion, but like, what's the rush to do it right now, right? Like, I I get that it worked so well in Vegas. It's it seems to be doing pretty good in Seattle, but yeah, like Gary just went through that whole thing with Utah and in Arizona. I think that <laughs> that took a lot out of you know out of him. I think personally, just everything that he went through to try to make hockey in Arizona work. And, you know, I, I, I get it business. Now financially, there are benefits to it, but you're, you're right. Like you, you look at the, even like the NHL draft, right? Like there are good players coming out in the NHL draft, but like, we're not seeing, like, we're not hearing like, Oh, this next draft is going to have like a bunch of franchise players for all these teams to, to grab. Right. Like there are, you do have to think of the pipeline of what you have coming in, right? Uh, especially, you know, yeah, the NCAA routes get becoming more popular and it's it's producing few more. I'm not seeing it enough to say, yeah, we can now have two more teams now adding to that that pool trying to grab more more players, right? Yeah. Yeah. So well, it sounds as though if Gary is is true to his word, we won't have to worry about expansion anytime soon. So uh, sounds like we'll, we'll keep to the 32 uh, team system for for a little while longer, which I am very much in uh, in favor of really quickly. One last thing that I wanted to bring up. I don't know if you saw. Did you see where former Maple Leaf and the one that got away? Zach Hyman landed on TSN's uh, top 50 player rankings. Um, I think it was not as I know where it was. I'm asking you if you know where it uh, was. Oh man, I think he went up from last year, obviously. Um he's in the top forty, right? At least. Yes. Yeah. I think he's like in the thirties. I I, 30, I, I, 30, 30. I I I saw it on on X, but I didn't see exactly where it was. Thirty fifth. Zach Hyman, the one that got away. TSN ranked him as the 35th best player in the NHL going After into this 54 year. goals last year. Yeah, like, is that low for him? I mean, it might be considering, like, I, I don't know who, like... like he, that That's the weird thing when it comes to Hyman. Like, 30, he scored 54 goals last year, plus another 16, I think, in the playoffs. So, like, 70 goals last year. He scored as many goals as Austin Matthews, actually. I'm pretty sure. Um, or, or roughly he, the same. No, I think it was tied. Yeah, yeah, because Matthews scored what twice in the playoffs. Anyway, um, roughly the same amount of goals as Matthews did last season. If you combine playoffs and regular season, but it's like he never gets the respect for it because he's playing on a line with Connor McDavid, and he's you know picking up cookies at the side of the net, and he's getting all these power play points and goals, and he just he doesn't get the credit, but. Really, like I, when Zach Hyman was here in Toronto, I know both of us were, were big time Hyman fans. And when he was let go, it felt like the one that got away. And I bet if you ask Kyle Dubas, if there's one thing you regret more than anything else in your tenure as Maple Leafs general manager, I bet you he would say it was letting Zach Hyman go. I, I, I bet you any money and, and what he's, you know, turned out to do now, who knows, maybe he doesn't become this if he, if he goes to, to, if he stays in Toronto, but it was trending that way. Like, you know, three straight years, you saw him take leaps, leaps, leaps. And then he was playing up on the top line and he was kind of the fixer elixir for Sheldon Keefe. And, you know, all of a sudden he goes to Edmonton, he ends up with McDavid, McDavid, you know, gets a hundred assists. Well, a lot of those assists came because Zach Hyman was there to, to finish. And uh, could have been here in Toronto, but I, I thought that was kind of wild. And, and it was, I just wasn't sure. I saw the rank in 35. I'm like, might be a little low for a guy who scored 70 goals last year. But again, he just doesn't get the respect, which is crazy because he's an elite two way player, elite two way player. Um, but yeah, Bedard came in at 34, one spot ahead of him. Funny enough. Yeah, these rankings are always very interesting because you're not yeah. just. You're trying to consider the whole body of work rather than just, oh, he had 54 goals. Well, what else is he doing? Yeah. He's and all those things. So those lists are always, always very interesting. Well, this is probably going to be a conversation for tomorrow because I believe, or I guess today, by the time that this, this podcast is out there and people are listening, um, 
30 through 20 or 30 through 21 is going to be out there. I believe we will see our first Maple Leaf show up, whether it's William Nylander or it's Mitch Marner. I believe both of them will will be in the top 30. I will be curious to see who ends up ahead of who. Mm. It will be very interesting. I actually Sportsnet's doing theirs. Zach Hyman, 32. So, all right. Similar, similar, uh, similar spot. Have they had Nylander or Marner out there yet? I haven't seen any Leafs yet. Yeah, no. But I would be shocked if those two are not in the top 30. Uh, Very shocked. So I'd imagine we'll see them kind of pop in either top 30. Maybe maybe Marner squeaks into the top 20. We'll see. I don't know after last year, but... Uh, I'll be curious to see who, uh, you know, where, where those guys land. I would imagine we'll know that that information uh, later on today, I suppose. And that'll be something we can come back and chat about tomorrow. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more suity and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.